Well, hello everyone. It's that time again, my favorite type of video to make, a ranked list. In October, when I started posting videos relatively frequently, I was releasing all horror-related content. And at one point during the month of October, I released a review for the film The Texas Chainsaw Massacre. This is a franchise that I'd never really had any experience with other than the original film. And I really like the original film. I think it's really well made. It really holds its validity as one of the greatest horror films of all time. And in 2022, the new Texas Chainsaw Massacre film that was a direct sequel to the original was released and I watched it and those are the only two films that I had seen. So I decided to go ahead and watch every single Texas Chainsaw Massacre film in the franchise and it was an interesting experience to say the least. I'm a big horror movie fan. I have a fondness and appreciation for all the franchises in one way or the other. I obviously have my favorites. I have ones that I'm not a huge fan of. This one's kind of in the middle for me. There's moments through the whole franchise that I think hold their validity and that are really enjoyable. And there's some that are just absolute hot pieces of garbage. It's really interesting. This, similar to the Halloween franchise, it's kind of all over the place. The timeline is a little confusing because of all the different production companies that have had rights to these films. But I'm going to rank all nine Texas Chainsaw Massacre films and give some brief thoughts and opinions on each one. Obviously, with the original film and the Texas Chainsaw 2022, I'm not going to go too deep into those when they come up on the rank list because I did full videos for both of those. And when I reference those, I'll put the links to full videos of my thoughts on those in there. But yeah, without further ado, I'm going to get into my reviews. So obviously, as I say in all of my rank lists, this are, is just my opinion. Your opinion is probably going to be different than mine because a lot of these films on this list will absolutely hate or they love with a burning passion. And this is just my opinion. This is what I enjoyed. Like I said, compared to like Nightmare on Elm Street or Friday the 13th or the Child's Play franchise, I don't have as much of a connection to this because these are all new movies for me and my opinion could change in re-watching the franchise. But this is where it stands right now and without further ado, let's get into it. So coming in dead last is going to be The Texas Chainsaw Massacre 3 Leatherface directed by Jeff Burr. This movie was insufferable in my opinion. Uh, I know there's a lot of people I saw on Twitter this week because people are posting about Texas Chainsaw films relatively frequently, but there's a lot of people who put this at the top of their list and I have no idea why. This movie was one of the most boring films I have ever watched. The characters were completely meaningless. I didn't give a shit about anyone in this movie. By the time that it was like at the halfway point, I just wanted it to be over. I felt like Leatherface was almost a side character in a film with his name in the title. And I understand, you know, how big the Sawyer family is in all of these films and like the pivotal role that they play. This movie sort of takes place in the same timeline as the rest of them, but not really. It's 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 confusing as to how this one lines up with the other movies. I did like the chainsaw that was introduced that says the saw is family on it. Vigo Mortensen who shows up and Ken Forey who I think both give Great performances despite what little they're given to do. For the most part, this movie is really forgettable. Uh, I don't even remember any of the kills in this one. Like I said, I watched all of these movies back to back to back, and this one I can't even pick out bits and pieces of it. And I remember by the time it was over, I'm like, God, for such an early installment in this franchise, it's just terrible. It felt like a an easy cash grab to rake in uh, royalties on a property that people held dearly because of the first two films that Toby Hooper created. And yeah, this one, uh, it's not very good. And I think that of all the films in this franchise, the remaining ones I talk about, I would probably watch them again. This one, I don't see myself ever wanting to revisit. Similarly, I have not done a rank list for the Friday the 13th films. Uh, Jason Goes to Hell is one of the worst movies I have ever watched in my entire life. It's one that when I watch the Friday the 13th franchise, I don't ever want to see unless I have to watch it with someone who has never seen it before. And this is going to be one of those circumstances. I don't ever see myself watching this film again. So coming in at number eight is going to be the Leatherface film, which is the 2017 
prequel film that is made, I believe, by the same production company who put together Texas Chainsaw 3D. Uh, this isn't a terrible movie by any means. I know a lot of people who enjoy the franchise hate this movie with a burning passion. I think the script is really stupid. There's a lot of elements in this that don't work. But one of the things I will give to it is that, you know, looking at where Leatherface came from, why he is the way that he is, giving a little bit of insight into the family, not too much, and then this whole escaping the mental institution with this woman who's a nurse there, and then these kids that are there, there's a bait and switch in the movie of like, oh, this is who we think Leatherface is gonna be, and then at halfway point during the movie, they flip the script, it's not the kid that you think that it's gonna be, it's another one of the kids. And the relationship between the Sawyer family and the police chief in the town, and the kind of back and forth between them. And some of those dynamics are interesting. Most of the performances in the film are meh. I liked some of the kills in the film. It's relatively brutal. For the most part, it was boring, and that's unfortunate, because when you look at a movie like this, you could make it really interesting. You could dive into that backstory in a really unique way, and it's mostly just kind of like a road trip across Texas with these characters who are just expendable so they can get killed. It doesn't really dive enough into the psyche of other faces character for me to care enough about it as a prequel film. It just kind of exists. It's not one that's like miserable to sit through or anything. It's just not one of my favorites. Coming in at number seven is going to be Texas Chainsaw Massacre 2022. I just did a full review of this movie. Uh, I think the kills are really great in it. It's really brutal. The look of Leatherface is really cool. But aside from that, the rest of it sucks. The screenplay is horrible. The characters are terrible. The only reason why I would even put it above the Leatherface film, because I think the Leatherface film has a better plot than this, it's just boring. And the thing is, when I watch these movies, if they're gonna be boring and they're not gonna have a really good script, at least give some good kills. And the Texas Chainsaw Massacre 2022 has some really brutal and great kills. They just have pointless characters in them that have no arc whatsoever. Uh, they're just there to get killed off. Some of the situations I talked about in the video set up these kills, like the party bus kill sequence. It's just lazy. It's like it's there just so that it can happen. The movie is not good. And it's unfortunate because I look at the, the production company who put together Leatherface. The movies look good. That and the, te the Texas Chainsaw 3D, they look good. Screenwriting in both of them is not good. But there's potential. They clearly are not the ones doing it anymore. They completely ignored every other film in the franchise by doing this 2022 movie. I did not like it at all. This one is not one I could see myself revisiting in the future, similarly to that Leatherface film. And yeah, just relatively forgettable and bland. Coming in at number six, this is probably going to be my most controversial take. Well, possibly. You'll have to make up your mind. Coming in at number six is Toby Hooper's Texas Chainsaw Massacre 2. This was the biggest disappointment in the franchise for me. I had heard for years and years and years that this was Toby Hooper's going the direction of Sam Raimi, which I've done a video on Evil Dead 2 and on Evil Dead the original and the remake. I love the Evil Dead franchise. I think Evil Dead the original film is a perfect film, similarly to how I feel about the original Texas Chainsaw Massacre. I think it's a perfect horror film, executed great, and Sam Raimi decided to in Evil Dead 2, up the camp, make it funnier, but it's also still scary, and it does a great job of balancing those tones, and it's a perfect horror film in my opinion. So when people put it on that high bar, I get really excited for it. This movie is boring, and it's bloated. It's an hour and 40 minutes, virtually nothing happens for like an hour of the film. You're introduced to this character in charge of a radio station. Her name is Stretch. She is the most obnoxious and awful character in like any horror film I've watched in recent memory. Every time she was on screen, all she would do is scream and run to another room. And it was just irritating and grating after a while to where I was like, she's supposed to be the person I'm rooting for in the movie and I just want her to die because she's so annoying. And she really makes the movie insufferable. Then you have the introduction of Dennis Hopper's character, who has the potential to be one of the greatest characters in any movie, because I just think of him in Blue Velvet and how unhinged he is and how David Lynch utilizes him perfectly. I think Dennis Hopper was an incredible actor. And when he is given time to shine in this movie, 
He does. It's fantastic. Everybody talks about the chainsaw fight in this movie. It's literally like the last eight minutes. And you're so bored up to that point that by the time it happens, you don't care enough about it for it to really be impactful. Leatherface, once again, feels like a side character in a franchise that is supposed to be built around him as the lead. I understand how important family is in the original uh, film, and I get why they play that into the film a little bit more. But yeah, I just, the one guy that everybody talks about loving the chop top or whatever, I just found him really annoying. I didn't find him scary. I just found every line of dialogue he delivered to be really fucking obnoxious. And yeah, this was really disappointing. I don't have much more to say about it. Kills are forgettable. The best sequence in the film, in my opinion, is the beginning chase with those idiot college kids in the car. And it still doesn't make any, it has that 80s horror film logic of driving down this bridge that when it's shown in a long shot later is a super tiny bridge, but somehow they're on it for forever, which is entertaining. Uh, I like Toby Hooper as a filmmaker. I think he's really talented. I love the Poltergeist film. I love the original Texas Chainsaw, but this movie just didn't work for me and it's upsetting because I had high hopes for this one and it was not very good. Coming in at number five is Texas Chainsaw Massacre The Beginning. So this is the prequel to the Texas Chainsaw Massacre reboot from 2003. Yes, trying to keep you on track with how these movies line up. This brings back a lot of the characters that were introduced not the kids that are killed off, but brings back a lot of the members of the family from the 2003 film. And I hate Platinum Dunes for the most part. I think they put out a lot of really garbage movies that just seem quickly put together. But this one I found relatively enjoyable. I think it's one that on rewatches might even make it higher up in my list. It's very grisly. The kills are super violent. I love the look of Leatherface at the beginning of this film before he puts like the skin mask on where he's just got like a covering over the part of his face that's mutilated. He has this long hair. He's really big and burly in this film. Like comparatively, the first two movies, the second one, he's just goofy. He, there's nothing scary about Leatherface in the second one at all it's just dumb the first one he's menacing because he just seems crazy this one and in the the 2003 remake he's this really big enormous guy who really provides that sense of fear and dread that if someone with a chainsaw who's the size of a football linebacker is coming after you you're going to be terrified and I think that's one of the more effective parts of this film. It's shot with that gross, like, sepia-esque tone to it. Everything feels dirty and grimy, which works for these films. They're backwoods rednecks who eat people. It makes a lot of sense that these movies would make you feel gross. I think where this movie suffers the most is the beginning, the first act. It's really intense right out of the gate. And then it just sort of falls off for a while and gets relatively boring. You have this new group of characters who's introduced that are essentially doing the same thing as the people in the remake. They're traveling through Texas. Matt Bomber's character uh, who is re-enlisting in the military to go to Vietnam and his girlfriend. And then you have this other guy and his girlfriend that the other guy is Matt Bomber's brother. He's going with him to say that he's enlisting in the military, but he doesn't want to go. And it's just them traveling through, getting knocked off the side of the road, and the craziness that ensues. In my opinion, R. Lee Ermey, who is in this film as like the faux sheriff, he's also in the 2003 film, is the highlight. He is nuts. He gives it an incredible performance, and every time that he is on screen, he's just eating it up. And I think that he is great. He's one of the reasons why I loved this and the 2003 remake because his character is so unhinged and insane that it really adds to the, the terror that you feel towards the Sawyer family, which I feel like is lackluster in the second movie. I don't feel afraid of them. I just find them obnoxious. In the first film, terrified of that. If I was in that situation, especially that dinner table scene in the original film, I would be terrified. Harley Ermey's character is in this this installment of the franchise, which the, uh, the, the remake and New Beginning are in this different timeline, the original series. You have this whole new timeline that's constructed. He is the evilest person in the family. He's the one who manipulates Leatherface because he clearly struggles with a learning disability and he's manipulated into doing whatever he's being told. And that makes it even more scary that he's kind of the patriarch of this family controlling what they do. And what I liked about New Beginning 
is that you see how the rest of the family members are manipulated and even the mother in the house is really reluctant to do any of it. She's afraid she's gonna get caught and that they're all gonna get in trouble. And so it's cool to see that backstory. I just think that where this movie suffers is that first act is a little slow, kind of bland, and it really is just kind of a redone version of what's already been done before. Coming in at number four, which is probably gonna be one of my, my two really controversial opinions, The Return of the Texas Chainsaw Massacre. Yes, the film that I have seen in most people's review lists that is at the bottom that people say shouldn't even be a part of this franchise, and I think that they're very wrong. This movie is stupid. It has a terrible screenplay. It's essentially a rehashing of all the other movies. It takes place during the 1990s, I think, is when they say, early 90s. You have Renee Zellweger and Matthew McConaughey giving possibly my favorite performance that Matthew McConaughey has given his entire career. This movie, like, <laughs> talks about cults and it just goes in the direction where I want something like this to go uh, because you can only do the same formulaic shit so many times without getting sick of it i.e. the Halloween franchise which drives me nuts how many people say Halloween is the best franchise of any of these films because most of them are boring they're not executed well and it's the same thing over and over and over again Michael Myers is not an interesting character. He's just a guy who w went nuts and killed his sister. The Leatherface is a guy who's been manipulated by this family. You can make his character more interesting. And when you put him in women's clothing, putting on lipstick and running after people with a chainsaw, while Matthew McConaughey just goes batshit fucking crazy on Renee Zellweger, the woman in this film who plays Matthew McConaughey's love interest is equally as unhinged. There's this scene where she goes through a drive through to pick up a pizza and Renee Zellweger is like screaming in the trunk and the, the guy in the pizza restaurant's like, I think you've got something in your trunk back there. And she's like, you want to check it out, honey? And he's like, nah, I'm, I'll get in trouble. So she gets out of her car in the parking lot where she's picking up her pizza to tell Renee Zellweger to shut up. And Renee, Renee Zellweger just says, will you cut an air hole in here for me? And she's like, you going to make a sound? And no. And so she rips it open. And then the cops come up and they don't do anything about it. And it is just like so fucking dumb that you can't stop watching it. It's it's a blast. That, like I said, Friday the 13th is a perfect example. The thing that makes Friday the 13th such an amazing franchise is because every director that made those movies knew that they were stupid. Each one was trying to do something, take the same concept, but do it differently. And the more extreme they got, the better they got. And this movie is at least trying to do something different, making this character of Leatherface unique in a very specific way. Adding Matthew McConaughey in as the the leader of this group of psychopaths. The rest of them are pretty forgettable other than his girlfriend. And then you have all these expendable characters at a prom with Renee Zellweger who are just there to get killed off. And some sequences that are just downright hilarious. And I think this movie is misunderstood. People clearly don't get what it's going for. And I think it's a blast. This one was directed by Kim Hinkle, who I believe worked with Toby Hooper on the original Texas Chainsaw for the storyline and everything. And she directed this movie. And clearly, she got the original vision and was like, I want to make something entirely different. Something that we have not seen before. And I think it's effective and fun. And of all these movies, it's one that I'm going to want to go back and watch again. And I want to show other people because I cannot fucking believe that it exists. Coming in at number three. This one is going to be very controversial. And I'm sure that I'll get a bunch of comments about this and I don't give a fuck. Number three is Texas Chainsaw 3D. The dumbest movie I have ever seen in my life that I loved every fucking stupid second of it. It is so dumb, it's terribly written. It, the character of Leatherface doesn't even look the best in this movie. The kills are the dumb CGI over the top blood, but it's fun. And that's what a lot of the movies later on that I put lower on this list 
don't have. They're not fun. This movie is fun. It's bad. Don't get me wrong. The quality of this film is like a one or a two star at most. But entertainment value, five plus. This movie is so fucking fun, it's unbelievable. Alexandria Daddario's character is the most nonsensical character in any film. Like, the timeline of when she's born compared to when she's getting this stuff, she would be like in her 40s. She's, I think she was like 23 when this movie was shot. So it's like you're watching this character who's 23 years old trying to play a 40-year-old. Oh, it's just magical. Uh, and it, it, she inherits this estate from her family. She goes there. She's related to the Sawyers, as you find out through the film. And yeah, the plot doesn't really matter. And the people who she travels with, Trey Songs is one of them, which I thought was really funny. Uh, they're just there to get killed off. The rest of the movie is dumb, nonsensical plots. Uh, war with the police chief in the area. And it's just a blast. Alexandria Daddario, I made a joke in my letterbox review. At the beginning, she has this shirt that shows off her whole stomach the whole time, which is fine. Like, the, the Texas Chainsaw films, you're always going to have, like, the, the attractive lead female actress. That's what happens in all of these movies. But what I thought was so funny was she <laughs> gets in the fight with Leatherface. She gets picked up by the police and taken to the police station to give a report about what's going on. And they're like, hang on, let me get you another shirt. And it's like a button-down, like, shirt. And she purposely ties it off so that it shows her whole stomach in the exact same way. And I'm just like, that's right, director. I see what you're going for there. You're not gonna, you're not gonna pull the sex appeal out of your film, that's for sure. It's the dumbest line ever stated in a film in this movie where once you find out that she is uh, related to the Sawyer family. Leatherface is her cousin. She says, go get him, cuz, in one of the most cringeworthy and hilarious lines I've ever seen delivered. I could not stop laughing the entire time. This movie is so dumb, and I cannot wait to watch it again. I had so much fucking fun. People that don't like this movie clearly don't know how to have a good time because it's stupid, the kills are funny, it's just a blast. And that's what I want from this franchise because the rest of the movies, for the most part, other than um, the beginning has some moments and uh, Next Generation is a blast. It's stupid. The rest of them are mostly boring. They, they don't have anything going for them. They're boring. They're only an hour and 20 minutes and they're hard to get through. This one, a blast. Would recommend. So I'm coming into my final two. These probably won't be a surprise to anyone, uh, but coming in at number two is the Texas Chainsaw Massacre remake from 2003. This actually surprised me because like I said, I don't like Platinum Dune. A lot of produced by credits for Michael Bay in these films. Michael Bay's movies always make me feel really grimy. The dialogue's always really gross. I don't typically like it. Uh, Marcus Nispel, who directed this film, so directed the Friday the 13th remake, which I hated. Uh, the characters were unbearable in that film. I didn't even think it was a good Friday the 13th movie. Kills were relatively forgettable, and I just didn't like it. So I didn't have high hopes going into this one. But this is a reimagining that does it right. Uh, you have uh, the new cast of characters introduced. Jessica Biel's the lead. I think she actually does a really great job in this movie, although she makes some really stupid horror movie trope decisions that you're just like, what the fuck is going on in your head? But she does a really good job with the material that she's given. I think that she's a really talented actress. I've always liked Jessica Biel. So the characters in the movie are pretty good. They're mostly just there to get killed off. The family is really what does it. Arlie Ermey's in this film. In this movie, he's the sheriff who comes to save them bait and switch there. He's a member of the the Sawyer clan. The kills in this are brutal and this is probably one of the best times or one of the best looks Leatherface has had. He's like I said the actor who plays him really big burly looks like a linebacker who chases down these kids and it is horrifying. There are some genuinely terrifying moments in this. Most of it's played straight enough that even if like the dialogue wasn't the greatest I, I got past it. I still felt like it was enjoyable. There's this really cool shot at the beginning. This person, comparatively to the original film where you have the guy from the Sawyer family who's going nuts in the van and he cuts himself. 
You have this girl who they pick her up on the side of the road. She said she doesn't want to go back there. doesn't make any specific reference. And she ends up shooting herself in the back of their car. There's this really cool, like, pullback shot that goes through the bullet hole in her head. They actually do it twice, which I thought was stupid that they decided to do the same shot again. But the first time they do it, it's really effective and it's well shot. Most of the cinematography in this movie looks really good. There's this really cool sequence. They did it again in the new beginning and it felt a little hokier because they were just doing it again. But, uh... Whenever they're going through the woods between this barn that their van's broken down at and the actual Sawyer family house, there's a lot of like fog going through the trees and it has this really like ethereal, unnatural look that I liked a lot. Uh, it still has that like sepia grating on it, so the movie looks really gross and grimy, which accentuates the feeling that these type of movies should give you if they're executed effectively. And yeah, I just really enjoyed this. Not normally the one that's huge on horror movie remakes, but yeah, this one was really good and I would recommend you checking it out. It's one of the films that I think, aside from my number three and number four, which are just dumb, stupid, fun, this is like a legitimately well-made horror film and I think you should check it out. So coming in at number one, as to no one's surprise, is the original Toby Hooper, Texas Chainsaw Massacre. I did a full review on this, so I'm not gonna go too in-depth with this one. Uh, I just think it's a perfect horror movie. It's shot really uh, naturalistically. It feels like you're watching a snuff film almost, where it's like the film grain on it and the way that it is shot feels like a documentary. I like that this movie, you know, as, as horror films have progressed, violence on screen has gotten more and more intense because of the use of CGI. And directors back in the day had to utilize their limitations to their advantage. And to me as a person who watches really horrible, grimy films and really nuanced, intelligent films, sometimes the best violence in a film is stuff that's not shown or that's done off screen. And this movie has implications of violence that are almost more terrifying than the actual violence itself. The chaotic nature of the cinematography in this movie makes it just so watchable and enthralling and the Sawyer family is so menacing and evil. There's this combination of like true insanity in these characters. They're all psychopaths. And the dinner scene at the end of this film is one of the most terrifying things I've ever seen in a movie in my life. Uh, I really enjoy this movie a lot. And like I said, I'm not going to get too in-depth about it because I did a full review on it and I'll put the link up there. But that is my ranked list of the Texas Chainsaw Massacre franchise. So what does your list look like? Leave me a comment down below and let me know what your ranked list is. I'm sure I'm going to get a lot of shit for Texas Chainsaw 3D being up there, but I don't give a fuck. I stand behind it 100%. That movie is a blast. It's one of the stupidest fucking things I've ever seen in my life. And I want a Blu-ray copy so that I can watch it over and over and over again and just piss people off by telling them how much I love Texas Chainsaw 3D. <laughs> As always, if you could like the video and subscribe to the channel, helps me out a lot, lets me know the type of content you're looking for. I'm always putting out new videos. I've got a lot planned for the future and I look forward to getting it out there for you. As always, everybody, thank you so much for watching and have a great rest of your day.